This video goes over the initial and final value theorems and an application to control systems, which is the steady state error. So here are the theorems. And first of all, the value of a function at time zero is given by the limit as z approaches infinity of that systems or that function z transform. So once we have the z transform, then if we just let z approach infinity, that will give us the value of the function at time t equals zero. And then the final value theorem states that the value of a function at t equals infinity is given by the limit as z approaches one, or a limit, yeah, as z approaches one of one minus z inverse times the z transform of the function. So we'll look at an uh, application for this. And we are going to examine steady state error. So here is a unity feedback system with sample data. We've got the plant G1 and sample data. And so what we want to do is rearrange this block diagram in order to get a transfer function for the error. So we want to be able to get the error. And we'll use the rules for um, sample data and for rearranging block diagrams to come up with that transfer function. So first of all, any subsystem with sampled input, we can add phantom samplers to the output. And so that's what we get here and here. And then we can, well, we, we would get a phantom sampler here, but then if we move it past a pickoff point, then we just duplicate it. So we end up with these two phantom samplers. And then for any summing junction with sampled output, we can add phantom samplers at the input. So we end up with these three phantom samplers. And now we want to <coughs> move this past the pickoff point. So we end up just duplicating the sampler and G on both branches after the pickoff point. So we've got the sampler and G and the sampler and G. And now we can take the Z transform of all these. So we have R of Z, E of Z, G of Z, C of Z, and again, G of Z. And this block diagram, we see that E of Z is equal to R of Z minus E of Z times G of Z. So that says that R of Z is equal to E of Z plus E of Z times G of Z. And then if we just want to get an expression for E of Z, we end up with E of Z is equal to the quotient R of Z divided by 1 plus g of z. So this is the function that we're going to look at and we want to find the final value of this function. So if we know the input r of z, the z transform of the input, then we'll be able to find out the final value of the error using this expression. And so that's what we're going to do for three different types of input unit step, unit ramp, and then a parabolic input. So what we end up with is these error constants. And so we have kp for the unit step input. And well, we get this expression for the steady state error with a step input. And it's 1 over the sum of 1 and kp. And then kp is given by the limit as z approaches 1 of g of z. Similarly, for the ramp input, we have a steady state error constant. We call it kv. And the steady state error with the ramp input is given by 1 over kv. And here's the definition for kv. It's 1 over the sampling period times the limit as z approaches 1 of z minus 1 times g of z. So we'll find g of z, multiply that by z minus 1, and then take the limit as z approaches 1. And the parabolic input looks a lot like the ramp input steady state error constant. So we have 1 over Ka is the final value for the error. And um, oh, this is a typo, so this should be Ka. Mm. So now that that typo is fixed, we'll continue. So Ka is equal to 1 over the square of the sampling period times the limit as z approaches 1 of z minus 1 squared times g of z. And of course we'll look at an example here. So Say we had a unity feedback control system and the plant transfer function is given as G1 of S and it's 15 divided by S times S plus 7. So in this example we're going to find 
the steady state error for a step input, for a ramp input, and for a parabolic input. Mm, okay, so here's another typo. that I have fixed, and we see the steady state errors. So there's no steady state error with a step, and a ramp we have a constant steady state error, and parabolic, the error grows without bound. So going through the process, it's sort of a long process, and most of the work is review. We want to find the Z transform for this sample data system, and then once we have that, it's pretty straightforward and quick to apply the final value theorems to find, or really just to find the, the error constants, steady state error constants. But anyway, we'll go ahead and work through this example. So just to, as a reminder, the system we have is this unity feedback system. So it looks like this, the block diagram looks like this. We have a zero order hold and G1, we're given an expression for G1. So it's 15 over s times s plus 7. So we need to find g of z in order to apply these, or in order to find the steady state error constants. So g of z is the z transform of the zero order hold cascaded with g1, which looks like this. 1 minus e to the negative ts over s is the transfer function for the zero order hold. And then g1 is 15 over s times s plus 7. And from experience, we know that this is 1 minus z inverse times the z transform of g1 over s. So 15 over s squared times s plus 7. And we'll call this G2. And then perform partial fraction expansion in order to find the Z transform of G2. So we want to find G2 of Z. So B over S squared plus C over S plus 7. And so we, 15 is equal to A S times S plus 7 plus B times S plus 7 plus C S squared. And from this, if we substitute C is equal to 0, we get that B is equal to 15 over 7. If we substitute S is equal to negative 7, we get that C is equal to 15 over 49. We can substitute those back into this expression to find a. So we get 15 is equal to a s squared, Let's distribute this here, plus 7 a s plus 15 over 7 times s plus 7 plus 15 over 49 s squared. And now we want to group like terms, and that should uh, allow us to solve for a. So this is equal to a plus 15 over 49 s squared and then we don't really need to go any further because we know that this has to equal to zero because there are no s squared terms on the left hand side so a is equal to negative 15 over 49 or negative c all right so now we know what g2 is and we need to find the Z transform of G2. So G2 of Z is, we can just find the Z transform for these separate terms. And looking at the Z transform table, first we have 1 over S, and Z transform where that is Z over Z minus 1. So we have, and I'll just leave these as um, the letters instead of writing this 15 over 49 over and over. It's just quicker. So we have a z over z minus 1, so that's a, in the z transform of this term, plus 
And then for 1 over s squared, the z transform is tz over z minus 1 squared. So we have b tz over z minus 1 squared. And then c is the same as negative a. So we'll just say minus c, oops, <laughs> minus a z over, and then s plus a z transform is z over z minus e to the negative a t. So a z over z minus e to the negative 7 t. And remember, this really would be plus c, but c is negative a, so I just substituted that value here. Now we can go ahead and put this back in to this equation and get g of z. Well, first let me find this as one fraction, so the com with a common denominator. So multiply. Um, by these terms in order to get an expression with a common denominator. So we end up with a z, z minus 1, z minus e to negative 7 t plus b t z, z minus e to the negative 7 t minus a z times z minus 1 squared. And that's all over z minus 1 squared times z minus e to the negative 7t. Okay, so there's g2 of z. And now to find g of z, we just multiply g2 of z times 1 minus z inverse, which is equivalent to, well, I'll write it down here. g of z is um, z z minus 1 over z because that's equivalent to 1 minus z inverse times g2 of z. And so that is equal to a z minus 1, z minus e to the negative 7t, plus b t, z minus e to the negative 7t, minus a times z minus 1 squared, divided by z minus 1 times z minus e to the negative 7t. So now finally we have this expression for g of z, and we can apply the, the theorems and get the, or the final value theorem will give us the steady state error constants. So for the step input, we had kp, and that is equal to limit as z approaches 1 of g of z. So here's our expression for g of z. And as z approaches 1, we end up OK, so <laughs> as z approaches 1, this term goes to 0. This term goes to bt times 1 minus c to the negative cmt. So we get um, bt times 1 minus e to the negative 7t. And then this term also goes to 0. <coughs> and then the denominator we have 0 times this, so over 0. So kp is infinite. And that gives us that the steady state error for step input is 1 over infinity, so it's 0. So E, or I guess P, is 0. OK, now our ramp input, we want to find KV. And that is 1 over T times the limit as Z approaches 1 of Z minus 1 times T of Z. So we end up with 1 over T. And if we multiply g of z times z minus 1, then this term in the denominator gets canceled. And so the numerator is just, again, 0, uh, bt, 1 minus e to the negative 7t, and then 0. So
And then canceling, we just get that KV is equal to B, which we found was 15 over 7. And now the steady state error is 1 over KV. So we get that steady state error is 7 over 15. So that would look like here's our input, and then the output, or the error, well, the output would look like this. So it would be, there'd be a constant offset between the input and the output, and the value for that would be 7 fifteenths. And finally, for a parabolic input, we want to find Ka, and that's 1 over t, t squared times limit c approaches 1 of z minus 1. Well, we have it here on the side, z minus 1 squared times g of z. And z minus 1 squared times g of z is equal to a z minus 1 squared. I'm not going to be able to fit this in. So we end up with this z minus 1 and the denominator cancels, and so all the numerator, every term gets multiplied by z minus 1. So we end up with 0, 0, 0 over some non-zero term. So let me rewrite this. Ka is 1 over t squared times um, 0 over 1 minus e to the negative 7t. So it's zero, and that gives us that, that error <coughs> for a parabolic input. Steady state error is infinite, because we have one over zero for the error. And steady state error is an important term to consider for a control system, and this application of the final value theorem allows for a quick analysis of steady-state error.